Excuse me. What do you want now? Have you heard of a man called Marquet? Yes. He used to be known as the Mole of Momart. I have he's been hospitalized, probably by one of his rivals. Which hospital was Marquet taken to? The Agenmeyer Clinic in the Avenue des Hérissons. See you later, Sergeant. The old building managed to retain some of its original grandeur, but the modern additions looked like a baseball cap on a statue of a medieval saint. The young man's face was full of eagerness and enthusiasm. I figured he was fresh from college. Excuse me. Yes, sir. Is this the Hagenmeyer Clinic? That's correct. I thought I was in a garden center. Oh, the plans. They were my idea. A little greenery to evoke the spirit of nature. How may I help you? I'm here to see Jacques Marquet. Oh, yes. Are you related to our client, sir? No, I'm conducting a private investigation. Then I can't help you. So, do I get to see Marquet before the funeral? That attitude will get you nowhere. My instructions were quite clear. No one gets to see Marquet. So, unless you can prove you're a relative or a close acquaintance, you're wasting your time here. Look at this ID pass. So you're Merlin. Marquet has been asking for you. For me? Yes. He was shouting your name when they brought him in here. Now, let me see. He was on Ward B12, as I recall. Oh, he's being transferred to... Oh, dear. He's on Ward J2. That's... Nurse Grendel's ward. What's so bad about Nurse Grendel? She runs that ward like a South American prison. Keeping a well-disciplined ward isn't a crime, is it? Well-disciplined? In the discipline and punishment stakes, she'd whip the butt off the Marquis de Sade. Everything, I mean everything, is done to a strict routine. Six o'clock, alarm call. Six ten, bowel movements, and woe betide anyone who doesn't have a result. Those patients of hers are like Pavlova's dogs. She sounds like a real nightmare. And then some. If Nurse Grendel is that bad, how come the authorities tolerate her? She's like part of the furniture. Oh, you mean she's been here a long time? No. I mean, there's not a man in this clinic who hasn't sprawled out on her. I was beginning to get the picture. This woman was jealous, with a big green capital J. Thanks for your help, ma'am. You're welcome. Hi, my name's George Stobart. Pleased to meet you, sir. Call me George if you like. Are you sure? Yeah, that's my name. My name's Benoit, but everyone calls me Benny. Bunny? That's right. I used to have this cute habit when I was a kid. Uh, keep it to yourself, Benoit. Do you know the nurse on Ward J2? No, monsieur. This is my first day here. I can't wait to get my hands dirty. I was talking about treating my first patient, of course. 
I didn't mean to get my hands dirty, you the nerf. See you later. Right. Hi, my name's George Stobart. Really? If you wish to make an appointment, see the receptionist. Thanks for your help. The guy seemed to be practicing his air of authority. Today, he was working on his withering stare. Excuse me. Yes, sir? How do I find Nurse Grendel's ward? Down the corridor on the left, turn right at the senior consultant's washroom. Right again at the executive coffee lounge. Bear left past the administrator's sauna. And turn left at the end. That's J2. And good luck. Thanks for your help, ma'am. You're welcome. As I turned the corner, I saw the source of the hellish noise which echoed through the corridors. It was an industrial polishing machine with an odd-looking guy in tow. He looked blissfully happy for no apparent reason. It was a classic example of functionalism, like an early Soviet spacecraft. I almost expected to see a dog or a monkey leap out. Hello. What's that? I said, hello. Oh, hi. I'd like to talk to you for a minute. That's what I thought you said. Don't look so down in the mouth. No matter how bad things seem, I never let life get on top of me. Oh, yeah? What's your secret? Why, it's easy. All you have to do is smile and whistle this little tune. You know what? If you start whistling, I'll bust you in the teeth. It's a deal. Do you know a nurse called Grendel? Sure I do. Is she on duty today? Yeah, end of the corridor, Ward J2. See you later. Yeah, take care now. Uh, oui, monsieur. Is this Ward J2? It is, but uh, you're not supposed to be here. We have strict rules about visiting hours. Can't you make an exception? I've come all the way from California. You must speak to the doctor. I can't wait that long. What if he snuffs it? You can't talk like that here. This is a hospital. You will have to leave. Thank you, nurse. You may come back at visiting time, monsieur. Thanks. Uh, when is that? The second Tuesday of each month. The connector in the socket supplied electricity to the polishing machine. Hey now! You can't go in there. How come? I'm responsible for the contents of that cupboard. I guess the water cooler was for the use of people lost in the corridors. Maybe the face of the unaccountably happy domestic had made me unduly suspicious. I mean, I knew it was only my imagination. But the water tasted, well, peculiar. As I tugged the plug out of the socket, the polishing machine coughed, spluttered, and died. 
Mr. Shiny. What's wrong, pal? Dr. Stobart at your service. Good afternoon, Doctor. Oh, hi. Is this Ward J2? Yes, sir. The patients are ready for your inspection, doctor. Uh, thank you, nurse. Well, who's first? Monsieur Croquet in bed two. What's his problem? He's been complaining of loss of consciousness. You'll need this, doctor. She gave me a long, narrow metal box and a stunning smile. Thanks. Hi, I'm Dr. Stobart. <laughs> Hello, Doctor. The nurse told me you keep losing consciousness. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I've had the problem as long as I can remember. It's a real out-of-body experience. <laughs> like death, but not so conclusive. I see. How long does it last? Just a fraction of a second, <laughs> and then I recover. I might not have been a doctor, but I was formulating a diagnosis all the same. This guy was nuts. I know exactly what you mean. It's known in the medical field as blinking. Is it serious? Of course it isn't serious. It's perfectly natural. B but just think, two seconds every minute? Why, <laughs> that's almost half an hour every day. Two weeks out of every year spent in total darkness. I don't have time to listen to this baloney. Well, goodbye and good luck. Thanks, Doc. It was a device used for measuring people's blood pressure. Hello again. Do you know what this piece of equipment... No. According to the chart, this guy was called Croquet. The graph showed a steady decline in his pulse rate and an increase in his blood pressure. It kind of shook me to see this guy's life reduced to a few jagged lines. Now, I was no doctor, but this guy looked dead to me. The poor guy's temperature had been up and down like a white knuckle ride. No wonder he looked so sick. The name on the chart was Boissy. The name on the chart was Sopmarsh. His temperature was normal, with little fluctuation either way. This guy didn't look sick to me. He didn't have spots or stitches, and he certainly didn't have a fever. Hello? Anybody home? Who are you? My name is Dr. Stobart, and I'm here to steer you down the rocky road to recovery. Dr. Monroe said there was no cure for what I've got. Your problem is you stayed in bed too long. Are you sure you're a qualified doctor? You better believe it. 
I'm going to take your blood pressure. Why? I'm a doctor. It's my job. I'm going to take your blood pressure. Why? I'm a doctor. What's your impression of Nurse Grendel? She's a very efficient young woman. Efficient? You make her sound like a vacuum cleaner. I've no complaints. The woman in reception described Nurse Grendel as a monster. Well, that's simply not true. She's quite strict, but that's her job, isn't it? You've got to have discipline in a place like this. See you later. Doctor! What is it? You haven't taken my blood pressure. Seems fine to me. You're not doing it right. Of course I am. No, you're not. Dr. Monroe never did it like that. I can't take a satisfactory reading while you're excited like this. I'll come back later. Hey, Benoit! There's no need to shout. What do you want? What do you know about this piece of equipment? It's a device for measuring blood pressure. Do you know anything about a patient named Marquet? And no, sir, I don't know much about any of the patients. I've never met a doctor who admits that he's only human. I'm only a trainee, sir. I'm sure I'll get the hang of things. What do you know? It's a... See you later. Right. Excuse me, sir. You must be the new boy. Uh, yeah, I must be. Well, uh, stop wandering about and make yourself useful. Bunny, come here, boy. This is Benoit, my nephew. Can I trust you to look after him? Do your own babysitting, Gramps. Who do you think you are, anyhow? I am Felix Hagenmeyer. And may I say what an honor it is to meet you in person, sir. You are on my medical wall of fame. Right up there with Pasteur and... Leary, I look on it as a privilege, no, an honor, to look after your nephew, sir. He is fresh out of medical school. It will open his eyes to see a real doctor on the job. I'll bet. Show him around. Let him see some real suffering. So long, Hagenmeyer. Uh, could you take a look at the client in bed number three now? His name is Eric Sopmarsh. What's his problem? He's delirious. He just now came out of theater. He's recovering from major surgery. 
I'll have him up and about before you can say, Lazarus, get out of your bed and walk. Hi, it's me again. See you later. Hey, Benoit! There's no need to shout. What do you want? Here, take this pressure gauge. Thank you, sir. Uh, what do you want me to do with it? Well, keep it safe until I think of something. Hey, Benoit! Yes, sir? Are you ready with that pressure gauge? Prime and ready to pump, sir. Uh, what do you want me to do with it? Use it on Eric's sop marsh. Okay. He sat like a statue of a sack of potatoes, but the cop's eyes were as watchful as a hawk's. I'm Dr. Stobart. Bonjour, Doctor. Have you heard of a guy called Marquet? He's in quarantine, Doc. Right behind this ear door. Marquet is just the man I wanted to see. I wouldn't go in there if I was you. He has... anthrax. I have to visit my patient. What for? Routine. I have to check he's still breathing. What if he's not? I'll sign the certificate and register his bed as vacant. That's a cold and distant attitude to death. Well, I've been institutionalized to the point of godlike aloofness. The white coat suits you. Thanks. Catch you later, officer. Au revoir, Doc. Rather you than me, pal. Marquet? Yes. I am Marquet. I've been expecting you. You have? Well, what are you waiting for? Get it over with. I just want to know what I should do with the jam. The Lachmar jam? Yeah, right here in my pocket. Oh, oh. I thought you were... One of the assassins. <laughs> Not me. I never inhaled. So, you were sent in my place? Uh, yeah. You, you could hardly make the trip to Ireland in your condition. What should I do with the gem? Deliver it to the Grandmaster. Quickly, tell him that I have found the tripod <laughs> right here in Paris. Well, you have it? Not yet, but it's being taken care of. I hired a couple of stooges with a flair for petty crime. Would that be Flap and Guido by any chance? You know them? We've met. What about the Hashashin? Uh, he's more likely to have followed Klausner. He'll stop at nothing to prevent the reforging of the sword. And that's bad, is it? As for Klausner, uh, he's gone off to Syria. They have geese in Syria? He uh, has a theory about the location of the... That's enough excitement for one day, Monsieur Marquet. What are you doing here? Talking to this patient, of course. 
Monsieur Marquet is my patient. If Herr Hagenmeier was to hear that... Okay, I'm going. I'd learned all I could from Marquet anyhow. Ah, there you are, sir. I was just coming to look for you. I finished with your pressure gauge. Thanks, Bunny. What's that noise? It sounds as if someone's having a cardiac arrest. It's all right. The doctor's in there with him. Are you sure he was a doctor? Oui, monsieur. He showed me his ID. It was Dr. Braille. There's no Dr. Braille working here. He's an imposter! The door's locked. Help me, officer. Stand back, monsieur. I found Jacques Marquet. Did he talk? Yeah, he talked. For the very last time. He's dead? Yeah. Killed in cold blood by a bogus doctor. That's despicable. What kind of guy would pass himself off as a doctor and take advantage of a dying man? Was it Khan? No. I don't know who he was, but it certainly wasn't Khan. He got away, out the window. Have you ever heard of the Hashiashin? No. Marquet said that they were his biggest enemy. His biggest enemy was the bogus doctor. Don't remind me. That guy was evil. He had wild, staring eyes like a dead fish. I'll never trust a doctor again. I guess I'd better go back and talk to that weirdo. Which one? Rosso or Sergeant Mu? Oh, but you're referring to Andre. I'll let you work it out. Thank you.